What's good everybody? It's your host with the most, the Magus with the knowledge, and today we're going to continue creating Goku. In this part, we're going to be making the clothes. So for the shirt, I start off with a plane and I subdivide it, and with Hard Ops mirror tools, I use Alt X to basically mirror it to the other side. Now I have Hard Ops, so I can do that. If you also have Hard Ops, I highly suggest that you utilize that method of modeling. If you don't, then you can always use the mirror modifier to get the same effect by duplicating the shirt to the other side. The reason I opted to do it with hard ops this time around is because I didn't feel like fiddling with any modifiers once I was done with the general shape because it's just the general shape, it's not that complicated. However, if you don't have hard ops, then you might just want to use the mirror modifier just to make your life a bit easier. Now, one tool that we're going to be using is the poly strips tool to help us fill in some of the shapes on the lower part of the shirt and I'm going to do a quick aside just to show you how to properly use the poly strips tool. So a brief example on how to use the poly build tool just going to make a plane I'm going to tab into edit mode and turn on my screencast keys so tab into edit mode on this plane that I just created our X 90 degrees and we're going to scale it down and we're going to bring it up so to use the poly build tool what you want to do is you want to go to your T panel if it's not open just hit T on your keyboard and go all the way down to poly build once you click it you see that when you move your cursor over edges that they highlight. What this means is you can simply click over where the highlighted edge is and you will drag out a new face. Now let's say you want to create a new face, uh, but you don't necessarily want to just extrude up from here. You can simply hold control and click. Now you have a triangle. Now you have a actual face. And if you want to fill this area with more quads quickly, in this corner region where there's a corner of one two three vertices you can hover in that corner and click a control click and you'll make a new face that way so this is how we use the poly build tool to speed up uh, the process of making the shirt so using the poly build tool I'm just gonna make a stream of faces all the way around the body to fill out the rest of the form and we're basically just going to continue until the the inner shirt properly covers the body and once that's done we're going to duplicate we're going to duplicate the inner shirt to make the outer shirt Cause you know Goku has two shirts the blue shirt and the orange one Here I use the bottom vertices of the shirt to basically duplicate them uh, and make the belt. I basically do the exact same thing for the pants uh, and I skip over the 
creation of the pants because it's exactly the same as the creation of the shirt. If you know how to create the shirt, then you know how to create the pants. You basically know how to make any base mesh in Blender. Uh, and the, you know, the belt and pants, they aren't really that complicated. They're just cyl cylindrical shapes that wrap around the form of the body. Here, I finally duplicate the shirt to make the outer shirt. I, I uh, get rid of some vertices to make room for the triangular dip in his outfit, which is which is really how you tell that this is Goku, you know. And you see, I'm working on one side because I have hard ops, so I can just hit Alt X in edit mode to quickly mirror it to the other side to uh, make my life a bit easier. Again, if you don't have hard ops. Why don't you? Hard Ops is, I don't want to say it's essential, but it's, it's, it's helped me beyond the scope of just hard surface modeling, and I think everyone would be better off if they bought Hard Ops for Blender. I don't know. Just, just saying. Um, but if you don't have Hard Ops, like I say, you can utilize the mirror modifier. Um, in this part, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm making some adjustments to the body so that it's not so bulky so that the clothes can properly fit around it and you see I now have the pants created and so it's it's okay to go back in and do some adjusting on certain body parts to make sure that uh, they fit properly with the clothes especially considering that we're not going to be seeing much of his body uh, until we make uh, the different outfits you know Goku Goku generally has three stages Goku has the stage where he's fully clothed ready for battle the stage where he's kind of beaten up and the his red shirt or his orange shirt has kind of gotten knocked off and his blue shirt is what's left and then the last stage is you know it's just him and his upper body uh, with uh, shredded pants when I say shredded I mean you know they're totally ripped up so we're gonna be doing those three different looks for Goku uh, so prepare for that but that's why we did the body and everything. Anyway, back to the video. I'm basically just making sure that the basic form of what I'm making is 100% the way I want it before I start sculpting. Uh, and I should have made the cuffs and the boots before I got started sculpting the shirt. However, I just decided to jump in straight with uh, sculpting the shirt uh, to... Uh, just to get something on there. Generally, when you're making the base mesh, you actually want to have the entire base mesh created before you get started sculpting, just so that you already have an idea of where your proportions are and you're not changing them after the fact. However, the way that we made this, because we used separate pieces, it's still relatively easy to change the um, the the shape of our sculpt. And here I'm just connecting the the neck to the rest of the torso to smooth that out and I start sculpting on it to uh, make the form of the neck before I begin with the shirt. For the shirt, I decided to use dynamic topology. The reason being is because when I would try to remesh the shirt, I would get a bunch of holes. I don't necessarily know why, so I just started with dynamic topology. And you start sculpting with dynamic topology like you would any other asset. You would start with the most basic broad shapes. You see I start off with x-axis mirror turned on and then I quickly turn it off because I want to be able to get as much asymmetrical detail in the shirt as I can. The thing about clothes is that they're not symmetrical on both sides. So you want to not use x-axis mirror so that you can diversify the wrinkles of your shirt more. 
and again really basic broad strokes when you first start off you know start landmarking where you want certain wrinkles to be and once you're done mapping everything out you can increase the amount of detail or in dynamic topologies case you know decrease the uh, numberage of the detail to to increase how much inner detail you can sculpt and I'll, I'll show you what I mean really quick so back in here with Goku I'm just going to give you all a brief example on how dynamic topology works so I'm going to select this go into sculpt mode going to check dynamic topology and in Dynetopo we have detail size so basically the lower the detail size the more detail you can add so if I go up to 12 which is the default at least for me and I start sculpting on the body. Let's get the clay strips tool. I start sculpting with a detail of 12. You see, because it's not very detailed, I literally lose resolution when I sculpt with it. However, and it might, it actually might be better to demonstrate this on a cube so you can see what happens when you start off with real simple geometry so with the detail size of 12 on this four faced or you know, six faced cube you draw on it you get obviously more detail or more polygons than you would if you didn't have dynamic topology but this is like the minimum detail size that you can sculpt with and you see our edges aren't very refined um, so this is like this level of detail is really for getting the real broad strokes of your sculpt down right but when you want to up the detail instead of 12 pixels let's go down to 2 now when I draw with clay strips you see my strokes are a lot more refined and the edges of them are more defined you can see more of the clay like structure beneath the strokes so that's how dynamic topology works the lower the detail size the more detail you can sculpt so you will want to save the lower detail size for later in your sculpt for the beginning stages you want to start off with something like 12 or 5 so you can get your broad strokes in and then once you're ready to add detail you go into 5 3.52. So that's how dynamic topology works. So we're basically in the stage of the shirt where we're now adding the more obvious details. We're going in with a smaller detail size to up the resolution and basically solidify the design that we went with. And basically that's the process for sculpting uh, you know I, I could I could kind of ramble but sculpting is essentially the process of starting with something very simple and refining it over and over until you get the shape that you want it's really a practice base um, skill you, you just have to get in and do it a lot you know look at a lot of reference um, do a lot of test runs you know but it's you know, it, it, it's it's a process just like everything else so enjoy the rest of the sculpt I'll, I'll pop back in intermittently with other things I'd like to talk about
Now we're getting started with the outer shirt. So again, same process, dynamic topology. Start off with the really, really broad strokes of the mesh. And at this particular part, is this is when I start, I start off the shirt with the uh, 5% uh, or 5 pixel uh, detail size because I just, I, I kind of just wanted to jump in and get a fuller idea of what I was looking at um, a bit faster. This is me rushing. You, you necessarily don't want to do that. <laughs> uh, you definitely want to take your time to fully plan everything out, but uh, these tutorials have taken a bit longer to put out than um, I would like and that's really my fault so I'm speeding up some of this but you know take your take take as much time as possible to get it to look as good as possible you know start off with the lowest detail size that you can manage and work your way up to you know higher amounts of uh, detail So for this part, and I've kind of modeled these shoes and cuffs off screen, but it's essentially the exact same method as making the pants and the shirt. Uh, but now I'm making the hands. And the reason I'm making the hands now is just because he, he kept he looked too weird without hands, and I, I needed hands to help me visually understand where I'm going. Uh, it's you, know, you don't necessarily have to make the hands right here and now, but that's this is just when I decided to make the hands. So. I start off with a cube and subdivide it. Now we basically make the hands the same way we make the hands in Sonic. So if you want a more detailed look at how to step by step make the hands, I would recommend the Sonic tutorial where we straight up just make the hands. Uh, and I'll put that uh, you know, somewhere on the screen or in the link in the description.
So now we're starting to sculpt the detail on the belt, which is again the exact same method that we use to sculpt the detail on the shirt. You start off really low detail size or you know a higher detail size, so maybe 12 or 10 or something like that. And then you work your way to five or two to get into the more intimate details. Basically, I'm wrapping around the wraps of the belt all the way around his torso to make the shape cohesive. Again, just look at reference with Goku's belt or belts made in a similar fashion uh, to get an idea of how they wrap around and things like that. It looks like this type of belt is uh, like a martial arts cloth that's wrapped around him. Um, but in other depictions of the belt, you know, it's like it's like just one strip of cloth that wraps around. Other depictions, uh, at least fan depictions, you know, they have like multiple straps or whatever. Uh, it, it looks like it's just one belt. Uh, sometimes it has a knot that he ties in front. Other times it's almost like it's just a rubber band that he pulls around, you know, pulls up his pants. Um, I'm not too sure whether or not we're going to add the belt loop or not. Uh, we can. And if you think we should add the belt loop, there would be some, you know, interesting physics that we could add to it that would, you know, probably make it look pretty cool. If you think we should add the belt loop, let me know in the comment section and I'll do a separate uh, video adding the, uh, the belt, the, the, the belt straps to, uh, to Goku. We'll, you know, we'll make sure that they're rigged properly and that they, you know, have all the physics that they would need to. It, it'll actually be pretty sweet. But, you know, if we don't, if y'all don't think that we need that, then we won't, we won't bother with it. We'll just, you know, keep doing the, the regular old Goku stuff. For the pants, again, same thing, really low detail size, work your way up to higher detail. I'm actually, I think I said what I need to say as far as what you need to do to get your sculpt to look right. Uh, so basically, you know, keep practicing. You know, if you don't like the way one sculpt looks, you know, just make another one or don't be afraid to start over and refine what you have. It's, it's really a, a process of doing it over and over again um, that that at least for sculpting it really really ups uh, the quality that you can produce now for the pants specifically I do use x-axis mirror because sculpting the wrinkles on the pants individually for each pants leg in as much detail as I like to go into just takes too long <laughs> it's too long it, it's too much so I you know, super lazy, I'm just going in and making the pants symmetrical. Except, once I'm done with the base amount of detail, I turn off the mirror to specifically add the detail to one side of the pants. However, even though I turned it off, I actually do go back and symmetrize it with the sculpt tools. And I'll show you what I mean uh, by symmetrizing it with the sculpt tools. So, now to show you what I mean when I say you can symmetrize your mesh with Blender Sculpt Tools. So I'm just going to delete this cube, make a new one, go to Sculpt Mode, and we're going to turn on Dynamic Topology. clay strips actually we're just gonna go scrape and so 
I'm going to make some changes to here and now these lines are crispy because we still have our two point pixel detail size so we, we're working with uh, really high resolution right now but that's fine because this is just a cube it's not that important so I just want to make some changes add a chamfer there okay so let's say I want this detail to be mirrored from this side to this side and I didn't turn on x-axis mirror when I started well you can go to this drop down arrow here and you have this symmetrize button and you have the option to symmetrize it from plus x to negative x so for your reference this side the what would be the uh, left side is the plus x the right side is the negative x so what you want to do is you want to make sure that your direction is plus to uh, plus x to negative x or if you added your detail over here then just make sure that it's the opposite so once you have that you click symmetrize and BAM it's now split directly down the middle with the same detail from the one side now moved over to the other side and I even think that it splits it, yeah, it splits it directly in half like a, a mirror modifier would. So um, that's that's how symmetrize works. So basically, after I symmetrize uh, the final detail from the left side of the pants, uh, I then go into the right side and make a few extra tweaks to make sure that it's not so symmetrical <laughs> okay um, and yeah so that's pretty much it for the rest of this video I do think that we do something with the shoes so when that part comes up I might say something else but until then um, this is your homework is basically to sculpt the assets that we sculpted in this video uh, to the point where you think that they look good um, and you know if you, if, you, if, if you don't think that your sculpting uh, is getting to a place where it looks decent then just try again or you know just ba bas basically keep keep it up keep practicing keep making iterations of your project and you'll get better the more you do it um, you know I put my entire process here just so that you can see how I go through each of these steps um, but the you know the longer I've been making at least these particular videos for sculpting you know there's not much technical advice that I can give you because it's really uh, technique based and you know you you get a better idea of my sculpting technique probably just from watching me than uh, me explaining it to you verbatim um, and you know, this might be a fault of mine as a teacher. I probably need to get better at my methods of explaining things, but I've actually kind of run into a stump as far as how to properly articulate what I'm doing when I'm uh, sculpting so that you all can get my same result. And I think the conclusion that I came to is just you're not going to get my same result. Because we're sculpting, you know, this is like the least exact science you could possibly ask for <laughs> and and that's and that's perfect because this is art right so the method of sculpting is what I said throughout the video you start with really simple base mesh lowest detail lowest amount of geometry you could possibly work with to get the basic forms put together and once you have that you then start upping the details slowly, you know, progressively, refining your forms more and more until they get to a point where they're high enough resolution to where they look nice and crispy, and you are happy with the look and form of the of the sculpt. And that's basically the process. Um, you'll you know you'll like you like your sculpts more the more you sculpt. You know, when you first start off, you know, you might be thinking, ah, eh, you know, because I know that's what I did. That's how I felt about my sculpts when I started sculpting, you know. But as time went on, I got better 
and I feel more comfortable uh, with the results I produce. But even now, you know, I look at some of this stuff. Like even with the even with the pants I'm sculpting now, I feel that there are some areas, particularly on the back of the pants, that I could have done better or differently. You know, it's it's always good to look at what you're doing, critique yourself, so that when you go in and do it again, you can get a better result. The last little bit that we're doing are the shoes and basically uh, I modeled the shoes really simply with like a six sided cylinder and just basically extruded down extruded outward to make the point of the foot and I'm going in and I'm adding uh, the detail uh, you know the, his, his like his seam lines the patchwork um, and for the, his shoe laces, they're actually a different material than like the seam line around his shoes. So basically select that area and extrude it outward and give it some refining edges to make it sharp. And once I was happy with that, I duplicated the area around the center crease of the foot and extruded it outward 
to make the shoelaces. But I found out that actually extruding it outward wasn't necessarily a good idea, so I decided to use the solidify modifier instead, so I could just work with planes. I then made the knots, and boom. That's pretty much it for this tutorial. So thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe to the channel for more Goku tutorials and Blender videos, and I will see you all in the next one. Have a good one.